Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be counting down our top 10 favorite set collecting games. Uh, this is a very wide net. There's a, there's a lot of games that have set collecting in them. I, it's something I've noticed when I was going through and making my list. Did you find that as well? Not really. I had, there are some games where I was like, is that set collecting? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I had a lot of games. So the thing is, set collecting is a mechanic that shows up, in my opinion, in a lot of games. My only debate was, is there enough set collecting in this game to call it a set collecting game? Because like, there's a lot of things where set collecting is like a, a side mechanic. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple where I'm like, I struggled with because I'm like, is there enough set collecting in this? But then usually I decided it was a big enough of a mechanic to, to be like, yeah, it's, it's a set collecting game amongst other things. Mm -hmm. But there were some where I was like, the set collecting, this is too small. I'm not going to include it. And then I just excluded those. Okay. So uh, I didn't have any problem. I, my, my only problem was narrowing it down because I had too many games that were set collecting. How about you? No, I didn't have too many. No. No. You just went. I think I may I may have been more strict on what is set collecting. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Well, we'll 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 see, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, for this list, do you want to go first or second? Second. Okay. All right. So, without any further ado, we'll get right into it. Number ten. Okay. So my number ten set collecting game is Ethnos. Now, Ethnos is a game where you collect sets of cards in your hand and then play them to be able to play tokens onto the board for an area control mechanism. So it's kind of a hybrid set collecting area control game, which is a really interesting sort of mix of mechanics. It, it's, just, it's, it's weird because the set collecting in your hand feels like the classic game of Rummy 500, and then the area control almost feels like risk in a way but without the battle <clears throat> but it's it's it doesn't seem like a couple of mechanics that should mix well and yet they do it's it's a very odd sort of game but it's one that i'm a big fan of um i love i love being able to do to pick up the cards and and look for the right cards to be able to make sets and then just be like boom i have three dwarves and then you get a special ability for the dwarves and then you also get to play tokens on the board and i think that's a really fun thing and that is my number 10 ethnos my number 10 i'm not peeking my number 10 is patrician oh. you collect sets of the portraits mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. get extra points at the end it's again it's like part of it because the main part is building the towers right you play it's like hand management and you play cards to be able to play tower levels in different cities and then the cards you go play though you. go in front of you and some of them and have can, portraits yeah and you can make sets of and you, three each i think it yeah is. and there's some with double portraits which mm -hmm. helps you make the sets better yeah oh it's a fantastic game fantastic game and uh that was your that's my number 10 patrician <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. My number nine favorite set collecting game is Multi Universum. So this is a, a really cool game with a really cool theme where you set your your a group of scientists and you've been experimenting with um, opening portals to other dimensions. And oops. You opened all the portals. So you've got these five portals to other weird dimensions. I love the cards that show all the the different bizarre dimensions. Mm -hmm. Because there's some, I mean, there's somewhere it'll just be like like giant insects or something like that. But then there's others where there's like living gummy bears with knives. <laughs> and like weird things. Mm -hmm. and, um, there's one with like an army of the undead that looks like uh, from, from um, uh, Army of Darkness. As an example, like the Deadites. So there, there's tons of weird stuff in there. But what you got to do is you have to play cards to be able to... Uh, you play cards for their effects or you play cards to collect them later to because all the cards are multi-purpose. And if you collect the right sets of cards to close a portal, you can trade those in to get the portal, which is then worth points later. 
Uh, there's actually quite a bit of set collecting in here because then you want to collect sets of portals uh, where you can either collect sets of lots of different portals or lots of the same type of portal to be able to get more points, bonus points at the end of the game. So it's actually kind of got set collecting twice in this game. And the, uh, on top of that, the theme itself, which very much reminds me of, of two IPs that I'm a big fan of, which are Stranger Things and um, The Mist, because of the accidental opening of the portals to these other dimensions, the theme is really cool. And the mechanics are really fun. The multi-use cards are really fun. And that's why Multi-Universum is my number nine favorite set collecting game. My number nine is Guildhall. Oh, good one. Um, in this one, you're collecting sets of different guild members. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you trade them in for victory points. Yeah, the, you play them... Each you play them in front of you, but then you have to you have to like put them in a discard pile when you get your points. I think. Yeah, but and then you um you're playing them for like you play a number of them for their ability. Mm -hmm. Like it's like you play this many of this card and you get to do something extra. Yeah. And 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 there's all that. Yeah, but you are collecting sets of them. The guild hall, and of course we're talking about the original guild hall, not all the weird revamps they've done. Yeah, the one with the dude who's incredibly happy to be holding a pig. <laughs> <laughs> So that was my number nine, Guildhall. Number eight. My number eight favorite set collecting game is Space Park. So now Space Park is a game that is essentially a giant rondelle. You've got, you randomly mix up the tiles so they're in a different order each time you play. And you've got a bunch of the spaceships on there. And on your turn, you get to move one of the spaceships. And you can't put it on the same spot that a spaceship's already on. But when you move it on the spot, you're able to collect cards or gems or whatever might you might be able to get from that spot. And then eventually what you're trying to do is collect sets of gems to then move the ship onto a certain spot that allow you to trade in those sets for a card that gets you points. And lower point cards sometimes give you extra abilities. Higher point cards are just for points. And eventually you're wanting to collect the sets, trade in to get the cards, and wind up with the most points at the end of the game. This game is fairly basic, but also really awesome. It's tons of fun. And I love the whole fact that they went with this kind of 50 sci-fi theme mixed with travel posters. And that's great. I love the 50 sci-fi rockets, and I love the game of Space Park. It's a really good set collecting game. And that is why Space Park is my number eight favorite set collecting game. My number eight is Behind the Throne. It's where you're collecting uh, cards in front of you, and if you have the most, you get a special ability. Mm -hmm. But only the person who has the most gets that ability. If someone else eventually gets the most of that particular card then they get to use that ability right true and then i think the basically the more valuable the card the weaker the ability yeah i think the the two most valuable cards actually give you negative points or something like negative that. or negative abilities yeah. they, they, they handicap you that's a it's a uh that's a really fun game it was on my short list before i narrowed it down to 10 so it was one of those that just missed my list actually i almost made my list so that was Behind the Throne, my number eight. Number seven. My number seven favorite set collecting game is Potion Explosion. So Potion Explosion is, is a game with probably one of the coolest um, actual uh, game components ever, which is this, this constructible marble dispenser it's the po the potion ingredient dispenser i believe mm -hmm. they call it and what you do is it it reminds me the main game mechanic reminds me a lot of um sort of video game puzzle games where you, you pull one marble out one marble of your choice and the marbles if they cl that click together when you pull them out if they're the same color they blow up and you get to get them too. And if that, then the ones that click together after that are the same color, they blow up also and you get those too. And basically you can take all those marbles and the potions you're working on, they'll have certain sets of colors you're needing to look for in the marbles 
to be able to complete those potions. So then you set collect the, the colors to put them on the various potions. And if you have any you can't use, you can only hold on to like three of them. The rest you gotta just sort of get rid of. And once you complete a set, you're able to flip that potion up, take it off of your potion stand. If you're no longer working on it, it's now completed. And it's now worth points towards the end of the game. And then in addition, all of the completed potions can each be drunk once you turn them upside down to show them that they've been drunk for a special effect to then further help you towards completing other potions uh this is a fantastically fun game i really enjoy potion explosion i think it's um really just one where the designers were really thinking outside the box and the set collecting element is really fun because you wind up like staring at the, the dispenser to be like where am I going to get the right colors for the potions that I need to complete? Where am I going to get the right colors for the sets I need? And that's why Potion Explosion is my number seven favorite set collecting game. My number seven is Flipping Flags. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're collecting what? the sets of, of flags of the countries. What? <laughs> you... You each have, uh, you split up the deck among the players and you each flip out, you know, you throw out flags. And if you see two of the same flag, you yell out like New Zealand and then you get them. It's a set collecting game. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> it's a set of New Zealand flags or like Germany flags or <laughs> whatever. Oh, I do not agree. And I also don't agree with the statement you made at the beginning that you stuck more strictly <laughs> to <laughs> to, the, to the theme of set collecting. <laughs> Are you not grabbing two of the same thing that is a set? <laughs> anyway, my number seven is flipping flags. <laughs> number six. So my number six favorite set collecting game is Sentient. So now, Sentient is a phenomenal game, tons of fun, where, uh, and it's also very mathy. It's, it, it is one of probably the most mathematical games in our entire collection. Uh, one of the few that you actually like that's mathy. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you have, um, you play multiple hands of it. It's one of those games where you play multiple rounds. And in each round, you have these cards out that you need to try to get, as well as these um cardboard tile pieces that you also need to try to collect and when you collect the cards you plug them into your board between a pair of dice and they'll manipulate the dice and you're trying to get it so that the requirements of the card are met by the die on either side so that you will get the points for the card so for instance if it says uh the die on the left must be greater than the die on the right you got to make sure that it, it that that requirement is met or you're not going to get the points for the card at the end of the round. And then in addition to that though, uh, and their cards are of many different colors, you've got these different color tiles you're also trying to get by placing your little um, uh, assistants <laughs> and such, and agents up there. And if you get to collect them at the end of the game, they multiply the value of the cards you've collected that are of the same color. So you want to collect lots of the same color tiles with the same color cards you've been collecting because it will increase the value of your point score significantly at the end of the game. And this game has so much going on. The dice manipulation, the set collecting, the... Um, trying to like steal things out from under your opponent and anticipating what they're after and getting it before they get it uh this game is tons of fun and that's why sentient is my number six favorite set collecting game my number six is point salad oh okay because you're collecting the different fruit and veg Mostly veg. Yes. Mostly veg. I, I was going to say... There's a tomato. Is there a tomato? I don't know. Well, there's some debate as to whether tomato is... As, as they've gone back and forth on whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. It, I was going to say nutritionally, I think they've settled... It used to be considered it's fruit, a, and now nutritionally, matter. I think they say it's a vegetable. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> anyway, in point salad, you're collecting different vegetables for points, and it's going to always change... Uh, uh, between games, it's like some are not worth many points, and then 
the next game, like, those will be worth the most points. It, you know. it varies. Yeah. Um, it's a very basic game, but definitely it's a set collecting. You like that one a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't even one I considered, but, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a cool little game. It is a cool little game. So that was your number? That was my number six, I believe. Number six, Point Salad. Number five. My number five favorite set collecting game is Century Golem Edition, which is also, of course, the exact same game as Century Spice Road. Uh, I prefer the theme on Golem Edition because I like the fantasy theme. I also prefer the production on Golem Edition because I prefer the gems to the cubes. Uh, so so that so it, it, that's what makes it edge out Century Spice Road for me a little bit. But so the thing with Century Golem Edition is there's uh, you start with a handful of very basic cards that allow you to, on your turn, you take one action. And your action can be either to play a card or to take a card from the draw. And the third possible action is to spend your set of gems to buy one of the Golem cards, which is then worth points at the end of the game. So if you play a card, the basic cards you get are things that like you can upgrade some gems, you can just get some basic gems... Uh, things like that. If you want to take a card, the first card at the end of the draw can be taken for free. If you want to take anything further in, on in the draw, you have to drop gems off on cards to be able to take a later card, and then you just take that card into your hand to later be played. Uh, the one other action I forgot to mention is there's an action to just pick up all the cards you've previously played and pull them back into your hand. It's this weird kind of hand building game. But you're slowly trying to get the right cards that gets you the right gems, and as you collect those gems, to then spend those sets of gems on the golem cards, which are worth different values. The more complicated their sets of gems, the more valuable gems that are required to buy them, usually the more points they're worth. And at the end of their line, you also get free coins along with them. Uh, the first golem gets a coin worth three points, and the second golem in line gets a coin that's worth one point. You have a small pile of coins uh, above each of those, to be able to get some bonus points if you get those particular golems, regardless of how much they were worth. And uh, you keep playing until I think someone gets their, is it a fifth I or think sixth? It's five golems. Five golems. And that triggers like the last round. And then you see who has the most points and whoever has the most points wins. This is an amazingly fun game. Uh, this is one of those games that I feel like the designer had a, um, which the designer, by the way, uh, is Emerson Matsuchi. I feel like he had just an unbelievable stroke of genius when he came up with the mechanics for this game. This game is fantastic. It's a great game to teach new gamers how to play modern games. Uh, it's very easy to learn, very easy to teach, but has so much depth that every game is different. And that's why Century Golem Edition is my number five favorite set collecting game. I absolutely adore it. Century Golem Edition. My number five is Gothic Doctor. Oh, I didn't even think of this one. <laughs> you're collecting, uh, you're, you're a doctor who is trying to cure monsters of their illnesses. What ails them? So mm. you have to collect certain ingredients. Um, certain treatments. Certain treatments to uh, cure the various monsters. You'll have like a tableau of monsters and then you collect them in your hand and then you'll you'll say like oh I have garlic and fang extraction I can and cure holy the, water and holy water I can cure the vampire and then you get the vampire and he has points on him. This is an amazingly fun game. I just didn't even think of it. It I don't know why it didn't it didn't occur to me when I was making this list. Mm -hmm. This is one that like it's like purely set collection. <laughs> it really is. Maybe it's because we haven't played it in a long time now. But it it didn't occur to me when I was making the list. It just didn't pop in my head. But yeah, good choice. Oh, so that was my number five, Gothic Doctor. Number four. My number four favorite set collecting game is Takanoko. So Takanoko is a game that is very widely known and very beloved uh because you're moving a panda around on an ever-growing <laughs> board and every, who doesn't love pandas so i mean it's it's really fun for that now the board slowly grows out and there's these tons of different um objective cards that you can go towards to try to get points and they all require different sorts of things. There's ones that allow, that uh, require pattern forming, that you have to build the board out in certain patterns. 
but there's another type that specifically requires set collecting. And what this one requires is when if you move the panda to certain tiles where there is bamboo growing, he will eat a piece of that bamboo. And the piece that he eats, when you're the one who moved him, you get to put it on your board. And the set collecting ones require you to collect certain numbers of certain colors of bamboo and then trade them in to score that card. And that's why I've put this on my set collecting um list this was one i struggled with a little bit because it's only one of the major mechanics to score with but it is one of the main mechanics to score with i believe there are three different mm -hmm. mechanics in the game three different types of scoring there's like pattern forming you yes. have to have a pattern of the tiles and there's one there's one that you have to have um certain certain heights height. of bamboo yeah. stalks there's the which is also kind of there's two that are pattern forming because that's kind of pattern forming too you have to have a certain number of certain heights of different colors of bamboo mm -hmm. there's the certain or pattern of the actual tiles and then there's the one that's the set collecting for the eating of the bamboo mm -hmm. um now it is only one of the three but it's still a third of the of the main scoring mechanisms so i felt it qualified and i love takenoko it's mm. a fantastic game i think it still holds up plus it's adorable um who doesn't love the panda bear so, and with the expansion, you even get baby pandas and a Mrs. Panda. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So that is my number four favorite set collecting game, Takenoko. <clears throat> my number four is Cat Lady. Oh, yeah. You are collecting not only cats, but you are collecting food to feed the cats, and you're collecting toys and, and, the catnip. and, and outfits and catnip. There's tons of set collecting in that yes. game. Oh, my God, yeah. This is one I didn't think of. Good game. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I was going to say, that's it, it gave, you're right. There's like ludicrous amounts of yeah. set collecting in that game. That is a really fun one. That one didn't even occur to me. When I, I already had so many others that I think I was starting to cut myself off. Mm -hmm. But that's one that I, if I had thought of it, I, it would have been on my short list mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Well, so, that was Cat Lady, my number four. Number three. My number three favorite set collecting game is Five Tribes. So now th this is one where it's got tons of mechanics in it. Uh, set collecting does feel like it might be a bit of a lesser mechanic, but I felt it was heavy enough in the set collecting that it counted. So with Five Tribes, you start by choosing one of the tiles on the board. You pick up all the meeples in that tile and you pick a direction. And you start going and dropping a meeple as you go. When the last meeple on the last tile, you get to pick up all the meeples of that color. And then you get to do an ability based on what color it was. And the abilities are, are all sorts of different things. And if you fully empty the tile, you get to take control of that tile, which is really kind of cool. Um, and you, there's the set collecting comes in with some of the things you're trying to do for, for your scoring at the end. For instance, tiles you control, having the most palm trees on them can get you bonus points or having the most palaces on them. And a lot of times that will, will mix in with some of the Jin that you can buy because when you when you purchase Jin, some Jin give you extra little abilities that you can do, but others give you bonus points for set collecting tiles with palm trees or with palaces on them, uh, and that makes those even more valuable and can and can really push you over the edge of winning the game of five tribes. In addition, there's also set collecting with the cards from the market. So there is a second kind of set collecting mm -hmm. where if you buy you're trying to buy cards and get lots of variety of different things, some ivory and some fruits and some gems and 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 collecting sets of lots of different things the, the larger your set gets the more valuable it is mm -hmm. so so there's so those two different scoring set collectings really made me feel like while the main mechanic is not set collecting this game it was a big enough mechanic in the scoring that it qualified as a set collecting game and that's why i have made five tribes my number three favorite set collecting game <clears throat> My number three is Carnival of Monsters. Mm. You collect, you set collect uh, the terrain to basically be able to put out the monsters. And then you set, set collect the monsters and then you as well. Set collect the monsters, yeah. Because there's different, there's lots of different colors of because monsters. There, there will sometimes be um, the things that change every round, where it's like whoever has the most C. Yeah, we'll get bonus. You know, so that there is also set collecting. Yeah, whoever collects whoever collects the most 
sea monsters will ha will get bonus points yeah. this round. So then you're rushing to try to steal all the sea monsters to get those bonus points. Mm -hmm. And that changes from round to round. Yes. And this is another one, one of those where you play several rounds of it. Mm -hmm. And then you get the, the the total points from all the rounds to to win. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a really fun game. So that was my number three, Carnival of Monsters. Number two. <laughs> I just saw your number two. <laughs> my number two is a crossover. <laughs> Apparently Lynn just spied it. My number two is Carnival of Monsters. We were very <laughs> close on where we put this on our list. Uh, you had it at three, I had it at two. And again, for the same reasons. I love set collecting the monsters. I love... that This is a drafting game where you, you draft your hand and then you play cards to try to be able to play the monsters while also trying to be able to play uh, cages and, and, and uh, bounty hunters and stuff to try to keep your monsters from running amok. Uh, I love set collecting the lands and the monsters in this. Um, Carnival of Monsters, by the way, was one that was done by Richard Garfield. And in my personal opinion, he's done a lot of games. Of course, he's most famous for, for like Magic the Gathering, but he's done many other games since then. And in my personal opinion, this is one of his strongest designs. I absolutely adore Carnival of Monsters. I have never had a bad time playing this game. Carnival of Monsters is just tons of fun. I, I just had a little bit I wanted to add mm -hmm. uh, when, when it was my turn to talk about it, okay. since it's my number two favorite set collecting game, Carnival of Monsters. My number two set collecting game is Parade. This is one that just missed my list. You're collecting uh, sets of the same color in front of you. And at the end, you want the least amount of points. But if you have like the most purple or the most green, they're all worth one point each instead of um, the points on them. Yes. So, so if you goes, want... It goes to, what, 10 I think it's like zero, yeah. zero to ten is so, on the cards. So if you have a ten, you'd much rather have the most of those. Yes. So that ten would only be worth one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one. Of, it's a weird game. It's where you like you want no cards, but if you have cards, you want the most of that that suit of cards. Yes. Uh, and it's also got that very much um, Alice in Wonderland. Yes, theme. I mean it could have any theme on it. Honestly, the theme is pasted on, but you got it because it was Alice in Wonderland. Theme. I did. <laughs> this is a really good game, though. This is a game that I think is one that. Just about everybody should have in their collection. Um, it's got some pretty unique and interesting mechanics, and it's also uh, not too difficult to teach. It's no. a it, it takes a little bit to wrap your head around the whole the reverse sc scoring. The scoring, yeah. But once you once you do, it, it's not that difficult a game, and it's very fun. That was my number two parade. Hmm. And now it is time for number one. Okay, give me a drum roll. It's time for my number one. My number one favorite game is a crossover. Do you want to hazard a guess what it is? Magician. You didn't even have to think. Is that? Did you see it? <laughs> I did see it, but I also know you <laughs> love that game way too much to not have it on a list. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was like, what was that? It was all the way on the bottom that of the list. That was my 10. It was your 10. Yeah. So this is my number one. Um, so yeah, Patrician is a game where you do hand management with cards. Play the cards to be able to play tower levels in a city. Each city has two tower levels. And every time you play a card there, you get to draw the card from that city. The cards that you played, uh, the cards that you played, you get to keep. And ones that have portraits on them, you set collect for three of a kind. There are three different types of portraits. You want to get three of the same portrait. And if you do, each set of three portraits, I think, gives you a bonus six points at the end of the game. Which can be huge because I've had times where I've got as many as three sets of three by the end of the game, and that pushes me over the edge. Mm -hmm. and even even though it didn't look like I was doing that well with tower levels, that eighteen points like makes me blow past the first player, which is great. So uh, even though the main mechanics are not set collecting, the set collecting can actually be make or break for whether you win or lose the game of patrician. And Patrician is, is a fantastic game. I don't know if it's in print right now. Um, it was one of those that in the U.S. was being printed by Mayfair. Oh, <laughs> pain in my heart on, on, the, on the loss of Mayfair games. But this was one of my absolute favorite games that Mayfair had in print. And I hope that if it's not in print right now, I hope that... Um, 
I believe it was um, Asmodee bought up all the rights to all the games that Mayfair was doing. I hope that at some point they do a new edition of Patrician because it is a great game. So now I'm going to do a drum roll for your number one. <laughs> what do you got going on? My number one is... is it a crossover? No. Oh, interesting. Wait. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what it is. What's your number one? Bill and Ted's excellent board game. You're, oh, my God. <laughs> you're, co you're collecting the historical figures in a set <laughs> to win. <laughs> okay. I could see that. Sure, it's a set. You're trying to get a full set you're of historical figures. trying to get figures. all of them or, or the most of them by the end of the game. Well, why don't you talk about what the, what the full mechanics are? Uh, well, it's programming is the actual main mechanic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what you're trying to program your little phone booth to do is to pick up all of the historical figures who then give you more programming things that you have to do before the cards that you choose. Yeah, because you play two cards every round. Yes. And the two cards will have each one or two commands on them that you'll do. And the commands can be like turn left, move forward, move backward. If you go off the edge of the board, you come back on on the opposite edge because the board is supposed to be all of space time, which is crazy. I love, I love that mechanic. And then all of the... Um, the historical figures after you collect them you flip them up and they reveal a couple of commands as well i which think it, they have one command each no some of them have two a lot uh -huh. of them have there's some with one but a lot have two most i think most have two they usually like a turn left move forward turn right okay. move backward they have tons of and and the more the more you collect the more crazy commands you have to do mm -hmm. every round you have to take like when you're deciding what cards to play you have to really take that into account okay what am i going to do, be doing oh god i'm going in a circle <laughs> you know <laughs> which is always funny so so that's it that is our top 10 favorite set collecting games um go ahead and comment down below let us know what you thought of our choices for our top 10 set collecting games list and let us know what are your favorite set collecting games comment down below and if you enjoyed this top 10 list and you mm. like to see us do more like it be sure to give it a like share it on all forms of social media and if you haven't please subscribe to the board game captain that's captain spelled with a k on youtube and if you're in a position to and would like to help the channel you can either join our patreon there's a link in the description down below or you can buy some t-shirts or mugs or other merchandise over on our Teespring store, there is also a link to our Teespring store in the description down below. And until next time, game, game on. on.